Hi there guys, it's Justin here again. And as the title of this video suggests, I'm going to show you how to reduce the temperature of your dull gaming laptop in 12 simple steps. So, um, I do have extensive experience with dull laptops. I've had a dull 6420 from 2011. It was a business laptop. Uh, I had an entry-level gaming laptop from 2015, which was a dull 7559. Then I upgraded to a Dell 7577 entry level gaming laptop from 2017, and currently I have a Dell G15 from last year. So when I say I know how to reduce the temperatures, I know what I'm talking about. So, anyways, guys, before we get to step number one, what I'm going to need you to do is just go to Laptop Tweaking Tips and hit the subscribe button. Kidding. So there are two programs I'm, I need you to download. I need you to download Throttle Stop if you don't have it. I'll put a link to the, the website in the description of the video. Just go ahead and download that. And second of all, if you don't have MSI Afterburner, go to msi.com, download Afterburner, and as before, I'll put a link to that website in the description of the video. Right, so that's going to bring us to step number one. Step number one, what you're going to do is you're going to undervolt your CPU. And if your CPU is locked and you can't undervolt, never fear you're gonna just adjust the tpl so what i'm going to need you to do is open up throttle stop and then you go to fivr and if this is not grayed out i want you to tick on unlock adjustable voltage and if it's not grayed out that's fantastic because then you can you, you can undervolt and set your voltage like this that's fantastic but Dow has been in the, uh, they have recently lock, been locking out people from undervolting the CPUs. So never fear, if your CPU is locked, what you're going to do is instead of going to FIVR, you're going to click on TPL, and this is normally ticked. What I want you to do is untick this, so you're going to disable the power limit control. You're gonna, you, now you're going to enable the power limit control. So you're going to set it to 40 and 40 and then you're going to drag the slider until you get to a value of 56 you're going to click apply okay straight off the bat you're going to see um, when you're playing a game and you got your cpu running at full tilt straight off the bat you're going to see a 10 to 20 degree difference in uh, or thermal difference in games that's step number one guys that this really is the best step of all the steps that i can show you but that's step number one all right, that brings us to step number two. So I've told you to download MSI Afterburner if you don't have it as of yet. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up MSI Afterburner and you're just going to go to the curve editor and then you're going to undervolt your GPU by reducing the voltage and via trial and error getting to the lowest voltage where your laptop can stably run at the highest frequency. So that's further going to reduce your GPU temperatures by about another five to 10 degrees. So when your GPU is running cooler, because it either shares the same heatsink with your CPU, or it's next to the heatsink for your CPU. So the lower your GPU temperatures are, the lower your CPU temperatures are. So it's got a synergistic effect. But guys, um, I'm gonna put a link in the video to a previous video I did. So if you don't know how to undervolt your GPU, um, I'm going to link the other video that shows you exactly how to go about undervolting your GPU. That's step number two, guys. Right, that brings us to step number three. What I want you to do is I want you to delete your Alienware software that comes pre-installed with your Dell gaming laptop. Um, particularly laptops from, I think it was 2017 onwards, your system would come pre-installed with Alienware software. It's junk. It's garbage. It doesn't work. First and foremost, it causes your la your laptop to start off very slowly. It takes about 40 seconds to, to open up after startup. It's junk. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your uh, system settings. You're going to go to apps and then just search for Alienware software. Nuke it. Get rid of it. It's junk. Trust me. You'll, you'll thank me later. Right. And step number four, you're going to, whilst you're in your uh, your apps and features over here i want you to go ahead and delete any apps that you don't use anymore so um, i've already uh, cleaned this out all these apps are used but any apps that you don't use anymore go ahead and delete it the reason you want to do this is you don't want 
uh, first and foremost, it's going to save you space on your hard drive. Second of all, it's going to kill any background services that are running for that specific app that's consuming CPU cycles, RAM cycles, and if you're not using it, it's just creating more heat. Go ahead and delete any apps you don't use. Right, that brings us to step number five. You're going to go ahead and disable your background apps. So where you go is you go to your start, go to settings, and then you go to privacy, and then you scroll down until you find background apps. I've already disabled this, but you're going to click uh, disable, let apps run in the background. It's going to disable all these services. I've got, you're probably going to have more services because I've already disabled this. But the reason you want to disable your background apps, if you're not using an app, having it run in the background is just going to cause it to use more RAM, it's going to cause it to use more CPU cycles, and as we've learned uh, a bit earlier in the video, the more RAM you're using, the more CPU cycles you're using, the more heat your system's producing. So go ahead and disable your background apps. Right guys, that brings us to step number six, disabling all unnecessary services that are running in the background. So the reason why to disable services that you don't use is because at the end of the day, uh, if it's running in the background and you're not using it, it's just uh, sparking up your RAM usage, it's sparking up your CPU usage. And I've, as I've mentioned before, those are both things that heat up your system and it's not required. So what I want you to do is go type in services, open up services, just type name. And then what I want you to do, I'll link a recent video I made of all the services safe to disable in Windows 10 21 H2. So just go ahead and open that video. And then in that video, there's actually a, in the description of that video, there's the list of the services that you can disable. Trust me, guys, this is going to lower your RAM usage. It's going to lower your CPU usage. And um, it's just going to run, make your system run cooler and a lot more efficiently. All right, that brings us to step number seven. What I want you to do is uh, uh, click to restart your computer, and then when your Dell logo appears, I want you to start tapping F2, and that's going to take you into your BIOS, and once you're in your BIOS, go down to the power option, and then in the power options, scroll down until you get to thermal management, and in thermal management, I want you to select performance mode. Now, what performance mode does is um, it allows your system to run at the highest level of performance and also sets your fans to 100%. So if there's any heat that starts in your system, it's going to kick those fans into to gear and it's going to keep your system nice and cool. Right, and that brings us to step number eight. What I want you to do is unplug everything from your computer. So your power cable, your mouse, Anything that's connected to your computer, unplug it, then go ahead and switch off your computer, and then just open up the back of your computer, and just dust out uh, with an old toothbrush or a brush, just brush out any dust that's accumulated in the, in the circuitry of your computer, and then also just go ahead and clean off all the dust out of the fans, because as dust accumulates in the fans, it stops the fans from actually cooling down your system. So that could very well could be a reason why your system's overheating. So guys, go ahead and open up your machine and just clean out all dust from the, uh, from your circuitry and then also your fans. And that's step number eight. Right, guys, and that brings us to step number nine. So what I want you to do, go into YouTube and whatever your computer is called. So if it's a Dow 7559, if it's a Dow 7557, if it's a Dell G15, if it's a Dell G7, Dell G5, whatever model Dell you have, put in, type in the Dell model, and then also how to repaste your CPU. And then I want you to look up a tutorial, how to safely repaste your CPU. And the reason why is repaste your CPU is most manufacturers, whether it be Dell, Lenovo, Acer, Asus, whatever the case may be, because they produce such a large amount of laptops, they tend to um, cheapen, uh, uh, like a little bit cheap when it comes to the CPU paste. So the CPU paste isn't great and it causes your system to overheat. So go invest in a nice, uh, a, a nice quality CPU paste. Go look up a tutorial how to repaste your CPU and then go ahead and then clean clean off the old paste of your CPU, put on the new quality paste 
or CPU paste that you've purchased, and that's going to give you a nice reduction in temperatures as well. Right, guys, and that brings us to step number 10. Um, what I want you to do is go and invest in a cooling pad for your laptop. Trust me, it just helps with the elevation of your laptop. So it lifts your laptop nicely off, off your desk or whatever surface you're using your laptop on. And then it also pushes cold air into your laptop, which obviously then is going to positively affect your fans on your GPU and your CPU. Um, with some laptops, you might see a reduction of 3 to 4 degrees. Some laptops, you might even see a reduction of 5 to 10 degrees. But I highly suggest going ahead, purchasing a cooling pad. It will help with the cooling of your system. All right, guys, that brings us to step number 11. Step 11 is more like a pseudo step. It's a fail safe for if all the steps from 1 through to 10 did not help you in reducing the temperature on your, on your CPU. So you'd go ahead and disable turbo. So how you go about this in, is in throttle stop, you see he has the disable turbo button. Just go ahead and click that and then save. And as you can see now, from my maximum frequency, which is 4,000 yeah, 4, megahertz, it drops down to the base frequency, which is 24,000 or yeah, 2,400 megahertz. But if you follow my steps, more, more likely than not, you're already going to see a reduction in temperatures and you won't have to disable turbo. Because the one caveat that comes with disabling turbo is that, yes, you do see a reduction of 10 to 20 degrees on your CPU, but you might also see a slight performance hit. So only go ahead and disable turbo if step number 1 through to 10 didn't reduce your temperatures. Right guys, that brings us to step number 12, and this is personally one of my favorites, disabling Windows Defender. The reason why I say it's one of my favorites is because I hate Windows Defender, so I just love di disabling it. It is reversible, so please don't have a fit. So what you're going to do is you're going to uh, type in Windows key and R, it's going to open up the run dialog, you just type in reg edit. Right, and then from there it's computer, HK local machine, you go to software, and then what you do is you go to policies, Microsoft, and Windows Defender. And then what you do is in Windows Defender, you type in new key. I've already created it. And then your new key, you're going to rename to SpyNet. And then in SpyNet, you're going to create a new DWORD 32-bit. And you're going to type in SpyNet reporting. And then what you're going to do is you're going to give it a value of 3. And then what from there, what you do is you just restart your system. And then once you've followed those steps, what you'll see here is that there is no anti-malware service executable. So yet again, it saves you on your RAM and it saves you on your CPU processors. So it reduces your temperature. And then if you want to go ahead and, and uh, reverse that step that you did to disable Windows Defender, just stop in Windows Key and R, go to Reg Edit. And the nice thing about this is you can turn off Windows Defender and switch on Windows Defender by simply going to SpyNet Reporting. And then when, once you want to switch it on again, just double click this and give it a value of zero. Click OK, restart your system, and then you'll see Windows Defender is running again. If you want to disable it again, just double click SpyNet Reporting, give it a value of three, restart your system again, and then you'll see the uh, Windows Defender is disabled. Right, that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, for those of you that have stuck through the, all of the 12 steps, thank you so much. Uh, you will see a drastic reduction in temperature. And um, yeah, the lower the temperatures of your laptop, obviously the higher level of performance it can have over a longer sustained period. You're going to see a, a drastic reduction in thermal throttling. Right, if you enjoyed this content, please leave me a like. If you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments section. And as always, I'm a new channel. I'm looking to grow. So if you enjoyed this content, consider subscribing to the channel. I thank you all. Have a fantastic day. And as always, it's people like you that make a difference. Cheers.